हेलो माई डियर स्टूडेंट हाउ हैव यू बीन ऑल आई होप एवरी वन इज फिट एंड फाइन एंड डूइंग वेरी वेल तो आई कमल शर्मा वेलकम्स यू वंस अगेन टू दिस अमेजिंग सीरीज ऑफ बूस्टर पैक here we are covering some very important and hot topics for your 11th and 12th journey as well as for your competitive exam and today we are also here to discuss a very 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 important topic of chemistry that is nothing but molecular orbital theory from the chapter chemical bonding so today we are going to understand we are going to concord this topic molecular orbital theory many students find it little bit confusing because it is a advanced theory and this is not taught in detail because of the complication involved but once you understand this theory in detail about the logic here you will be able to solve this questions quickly and you can be very sure that this topic is so much important you can expect at least 2 to 3 questions coming from this topic in your competitive exam so that means 8 to 12 marks which means a very lot yes okay so let's start the theory and before starting this first of all we will understand about the concept on which it is based upon the concept to which this theory is linked to so molecular orbital theory is based on the quantum mechanical model of atom that you have studied in chapter structure of atom remember the schrodinger equation the wave function the quantum atomic model of atom which itself is based on schrodinger equation schrodinger equation is not in our 11 12th syllabus only the name of equation is there and you should know a little bit introduction that what is the use of equation this equation gives us the wave nature of electron so electronic wave function is denoted by psi and that psi is calculated from this equation so let's first understand the meaning of these three topics what is the meaning of quantum mechanical model after the failure of bohr model another principle came that electron is having uncertainty in its position heisenberg told that that we cannot have the accurate position of electron inside the atom and because of that because of that uncertainty we always talk about the probability of finding electron yes that we can only have the probability the chances of finding electron in a particular region inside the atom and from there we started quantum mechanical model the quantum number the quantum number that tells us about the orbital shells and other things another drawback of bohr model was that it didn't considered the wave nature of electron that is electron also has a dual nature electron can behave as a particle as well as a wave and before this model all other model considered only the wave only the particle nature of electron so from this model the wave nature of electron was included and before any wave we are going to have a function which will define which will characterize that wave and that function is called as wave function this wave function will give you the information about the momentum of wave energy position and other parameters so electronic wave function is represented by psi the fourth thing that we have heard is about atomic orbital as the position or the location of electron is uncertain we defined some region where the finding probability of electron finding probability of electron is maximum by maximum means it should be above 90% it cannot be it can never be 100% but it should be above 90% and that those regions are called as atomic orbitals and atomic orbitals are also represented by psi because this psi is like giving you the information about electronic position so whenever we are using the psi we are representing orbital or you can be sure that we are representing the region of finding electron by using the symbol psi another thing that you should know or understand that how molecules are formed molecules are formed from atom right 
molecules are formed from atom and atoms have both type of charge positive as well as negative charge so there is going to be attraction between atom as well as repulsion between the atom when they are near to each other so when two atoms are near to each other both attraction and repulsions are going to be there so we are having the molecule formation only when attraction dominates over repulsion yes attraction should dominate over repulsive forces only then the atoms will come close and join together to form a molecule so this is another fact that you should know another point is that as the molecular orbital theory requires some of the advanced level concept to understand it completely so we are having a little bit restriction we are going to understand the molecular orbital theory only for diatomic molecules having maximum 20 electrons that is if in the question you have a diatomic molecule a molecule made up of two atoms and having electron 20 or less you can apply this theory to understand the behavior of that molecule you can understand the formation of that molecule through this molecular orbital theory but if the molecule is having more than two atoms or more than 20 electrons then you cannot use this theory yet in 11 12th level you are going to use the previously used concept like val valence bond theory like lewis theory or valence shell electron pair repulsion theory such theories would be used for those molecules yet okay and last but not the least this is the important thing of all the science topic in mainly in physics you have also studied this in chemistry you are also going to study this that whenever there is attraction whenever there is attraction between molecules or attraction between any two particles attraction will always increase the stability and stability and energy are reverse right so attraction will always lowers the energy that is whenever we are having attraction we are going to have lowering of energy and whenever we are having repulsion we are going to have increase in energy repulsion will decrease the stability and attraction will increase the stability and stability or energy are inversely proportional so stability decreases energy increases and vice versa so you should understand about these points before starting this molecular orbital theory so now let's start the molecular orbital theory first of all see what happens we are having atoms suppose this is our atom number one this is our atom number two when these two atoms are coming close to each other when these two atoms are coming close to each other they are having attraction their electron cloud and nucleus will attract each other as well as they are going to have repulsion so we represent the attraction by a plus sign and repulsion by a negative sign and that's why we have that when two atoms are approaching each other they are going to be either addition addition nature that is attracted or subtraction nature that is repulsion and that's why we have a concept which is called as lcao we assume linear combination for atoms only the meaning of linear combination is when two atoms are coming together they can only be added or subtracted. that that is they can any time only be linearly combined but they can either be added or subtracted and after that they can form a molecule it is very obvious that molecule will be formed when attraction will dominate over repulsion when attraction will dominate over repulsion now understand this thing that we are already saying that position of electron is uncertain inside the atom and for that 
we use atomic orbital let's call it psi1 that is this psi1 will represent the finding probability of electron inside first atom similarly this psi2 will represent the finding probability of electron inside this second atom and can you tell me if we are having uncertainty we are having problem in finding the electron inside the atom then the species which is formed from atom can we find electron inside it can we find the exact position of electron inside the molecule if we cannot find the exact position of electron inside the atom correct we cannot be very sure we cannot be certain about the position of electron in the molecule because molecule are itself formed from atom so definitely definitely the position of electron is going to be uncertain inside the molecule and again for molecule we also designate psi to represent the probability of finding electron psi to represent the finding probability of electron and there will be some point where the finding probability will be maximum and those points are always called as orbital so similar to atomic orbitals we are having another things which is called as molecular orbital atomic orbital mean the region where the finding probability of electron is maximum inside the atom inside the atom similarly the region where finding probability of electron will be maximum inside the molecule will be called as molecular orbital now as we already know that atoms are combining together to form molecule so if atoms are combining together their molecular their orbitals are also going to combine to form the molecular orbit that is the meaning of this statement is that that atomic orbitals will linearly combine will either have attraction or repulsion between them and through that attraction or repulsion we are going to have new orbitals which are called as molecular orbital that is the most fundamental concept of this theory what atomic orbitals will combine linearly either attraction or repulsion to give you new regions new orbitals known as molecular orbitals known as molecular orbitals and the meaning of orbital is all the time same it is a region where finding probability of electron is maximum let's just understand this fact through a graph this is called as energy level diagram suppose this is our energy this is our first atomic orbital psi1 similar to this is our second atomic orbital psi2 and now they will combine together so they will have two things either they will have attraction positive sign or they will have repulsion negative sign we have already understand the fact that attraction will lower the energy so if they are having attraction they will have increase in stability or or their energy will be lowered so the new orbital that is being formed will have a lower energy a less energy so this is a new molecular orbital which is formed by attraction that is addition of psi1 and psi2 so that is the meaning of addition that addition means the energy is getting lowered similarly if they are having repulsion in between them their energy will be increased repulsion increases the energy so there another molecular orbital is formed which is from repulsion between psi1 and psi2 that is subtraction between psi1 and psi2 and this is having more energy so atomic orbitals can only combine linearly that is the meaning of lcao principle linear combination of atomic orbital this assumption this principle is all the time is involved in molecular orbital theory now you can be very sure that these two are the new molecular orbital right and now in between these two orbitals this is having more stability that is this will want to form the bond attraction will form try to form the bond repulsion will try to break the bond isn't it so when two atoms are coming together the attraction will help in formation of bond and repulsion will try to have them move away that is break the bond so the orbital that is formed by attraction is called as bonding molecular orbital 
is called as bonding molecular orbital and the orbital that is formed from repulsion is called as anti bonding molecular orbital because this is going to break the bond repulsion is going to break the bond anti bonding molecular orbital and that molecular orbital is represented by a star sign so psi means a simple bonding molecular orbital psi star means a anti bonding orbital which is going to have a dominant repulsion which is going to oppose the formation of molecule this is going to oppose the formation of molecule from its repulsion or energy this is going to support the formation of molecule so this is the same concept explained through the energy level diagram energy level diagram now let's understand understand some conditions first of all atomic orbitals can combine but there are some restriction first rest restriction we have already seen that they can only linearly combine because there can be only two things between them either attraction or repulsion yes second they should have similar energy that is their energy should not be very different because if they are very away in the energy level that means they are very away in their stability level and a stable orbital will not combine with another unstable orbital unstable orbital will give unstability only right so if they are very far away in energy their combination is not possible so for their combination their energy should be similar they should have similar orientation as well orbitals are having directional property all the time so whenever we are combining orbital we are mixing orbital there is always the topic of direction so they should have similar symmetry or similar direction another thing another very important condition that because the, the we are talking about the formation of molecule and molecule is formed by combination so that combination should be maximum that combination or we will call it overlapping between the atoms should be maximum so that the bond form is maximum strong so they should combine maximum or we should have maximum extent of overlapping the overlapping between the orbitals should be maximum so you can call these are the conditions for the formation of molecular orbital atomic orbital should have these condition for the formation of molecular orbitals and number of orbitals is always conserved so if we are having two orbitals combined we are going to have two new molecular orbital being produced if we are combining three atomic orbital we are going to have three new orbital produced which are bonding molecular orbital anti bonding and one in the middle which will be called as non bonding but that again is not in your syllabus you should have understand only about this that when two orbitals are getting combined you are going to have two new orbital one will be called as bonding molecular orbital which is having lower energy another will be called as anti bonding molecular orbital which will be having higher energy which will be having higher energy let's move ahead and understand some of the more topics first of all for our simplicity and convention we have taken z axis z axis as the intermolecular axis z axis as the intermolecular axis what is the meaning of this statement that whenever two atoms are coming together suppose one atom is this one atom is this two atoms are coming in this direction we can say that this axis is z axis we will consider this direction to be z axis that is whenever two atoms are combining together we always assume the combining direction to be z axis this is our simple convention this can be changed as per the requirement you can consider this axis to be y axis you can consider this axis to be x axis as well 
but unless until it is mentioned which axis is taken you can always take z axis as the intermolecular axis now what is going to have we are going to have s orbital we already know s orbitals are spherical so s orbitals are not having any direction so in any axis they can combine along any axis they will always produce sigma bond they will always produce sigma bond so by the combination of s orbital we are going to have two types of bonding orbital sigma molecular bonding orbital and sigma molecular anti bonding orbital one formed from attraction another form from repulsion the overlapping between s orbital will result in a sigma bond that is this orbital will help in the formation of sigma bond this orbital will oppose in the formation of sigma bond you can understand this or by these orbitals simply all the time by understanding of support and oppose if the bonding orbital is there it is going to support the formation of molecule if anti bonding orbital is there it is going to oppose the formation of molecule now let's talk about the p orbitals so in p we have p z p x p y three types of orbital suppose we are having p z orbital now p orbitals are directional molecules are coming along the z axis and p z orbitals will also be along the z axis so can i say that when molecules are coming along the z axis and p orbitals are also along the z axis they are going to combine they are going to overlap head on axially that is they are going to give you sigma bond again so pz orbital will also give you sigma pz bonding and sigma pz anti bonding another orbital that we have is px or py both are going to give you same result so suppose px combine with px now molecules are coming along the z axis and px orbital will be perpendicular to z axis let assume this is the direction of combination and this is px so when molecules are coming along the z axis the px orbital are going to combine sideways similarly py will be perpendicular to z axis as well they are also going to combine sideways so when we are having z axis as the intermolecular axis x and y axis both will be perpendicular to z axis that means when molecules are approaching in this direction along the z axis they are going to have formation of sideways overlapping that is pi bond so px and py will give you pi p bonding and pi anti bonding molecular orbital similarly if you are combining py with py this will also give you pi bond so px and py will have similar behavior if z axis your intermolecular axis and you can see from one more thing suppose you combine px and py what will happen px is perpendicular to z axis but in another direction py is perpendicular to z axis but in another direction so their overlapping will not result in any formation of bond that is the meaning of combination having same symmetry that is the meaning of combination having similar symmetry same symmetry that is orbital should have same type of orientation they should along they should align themselves in the direction that will give you maximum overlapping that will give you maximum overlapping so up to 20 electrons we are going to have these three types of overlapping the sigma bond formed by s orbital the sigma bond formed by one of the p orbital and the pi bond formed by another type of p orbital let's see suppose we have s orbitals s orbitals are spherical so they can either have attraction or they can either have repulsion what will happen when they attract see suppose this is our s orbital what will happen when they will attract each other they will come together right they will come together and they will overlap with each other they will come together and they will overlap with each other this is our 
सिग्मा बॉन्डिंग एस ऑर्बाइटल सिग्मा बॉन्डिंग एस ऑर्बाइटल दिस इज द कंप्लीट रीजन ऑफ फाइंडिंग प्रॉबिबिलिटी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन दैट इज यू कैन हैव इलेक्ट्रॉन इन एनी रीजन प्रेजेंट इन साइड दिस ऑर्बाइटल यू कैन हैव इलेक्ट्रॉन प्रेजेंट इन एनी रीजन इन साइड दैट दिस ऑर्बाइटल और दिस रीजन एंड दैट्स वाई समाइम द शेप कैन बी If I remove the outer boundary, the shape will be somewhat similar to this. If I remove the outer boundary, the shape will be like this. Because they have joined together. So this is called as sigma s bonding molecular orbital. Similarly, suppose two s orbitals are repelling each other. so repulsion will not join them together they will oppose each other that is this orbital will have a push in left direction this orbital will have a push in the right direction so both orbitals will have a little bit shifting shifting towards the outer direction this whole section is one orbital remember this this whole section is complete one orbital which will be sigma anti bonding s orbital sigma anti bonding s orbital so you can always any time draw any molecular orbital just rem remember that addition will combine them so join them together repulsion will have them repelled away from each other so repel them each other away from each other and bonding orbital will have suppose bonding orbital has x number of node so anti bonding will have x plus 1 number of node that is anti bonding will have always one extra node from bonding orbital node are the region where finding probability of electron is minimum where finding probability of electron is minimum those region are called as node now see here suppose we have pz combination now pz and pz are forming sigma bond right so this is our pz orbital suppose first we talk about the attraction this is another pz orbital now what will happen when they will attract each other what will happen this lobe and this lobe will have attraction the lobe facing each other these two will have attraction and these two will come together and join so the between lobe are joined together these two lobes are joined together this the outer side lobes are still as it is are still as it is this whole region this whole region is one complete orbital this will be called as sigma pz bonding orbital sigma pz bonding orbital the nucleus of one of the atom is here the nucleus of another of the atom is here so all the time molecular orbitals are polycentric they are having more than one nucleus because they are having more than one atom you can draw the nucleus here as well here the nucleus will be here and here here the nucleus will be somewhat here and here so every molecular orbital is having more than one center now let's consider the repulsion between these two orbitals what will happen when they will repel each other again their orientation allows you their orientation allows to interact only these two lobes right so when they are repelling each other when they are repelling each other this lobe will be shifted forward this lobe will be shifted backward as well so both of these lobes will have a reduction in size but the boundary side lobe the outer side lobe are not having any interaction so they will have as it is this whole is a single orbital which will be called as sigma pz anti bonding orbital sigma pz anti bonding orbital and this in between region will be a node this in between region will be a node where the finding probability of electron will be minimum this is our third case we can consider any of px or we can consider py suppose consider between the attraction between the px orbital so when p orbitals are forming pi bond they are combining parallelly attraction will have these two lobes joined together they will have attraction between 
they will have attraction between so the upper lobe will join together as well as the lower lobe will join together one nucleus will be here one nucleus will be here so this is your pi bonding orbital either it can be px or it can be py this is your pi px or pi py orbital similarly what will happen when they will repel each other suppose we are having two parallel p orbital and they are repelling each other they are subtracting from each other so repulsion will means this low will be repelled in the outward direction this low will also be repelled in the outward direction this low will also be repelled in the outward direction and same with, with this low that means all these four lobes will be repelled in outward direction so this will be your pi anti bonding orbital of px or pi anti bonding orbital of py and this region this between region will be your node this region will be a node where the finding probability of electron will be minimum so every bonding or every anti bonding orbital will have one extra node from its respective bonding orbital and generally we observe these three types of molecular orbital the sigma orbitals formed by s or the sigma orbital formed by p orbital and the pi orbitals formed by p orbital each orbital will result in two new orbital one from attraction another from repulsion attraction will add repulsion will subtract now we are going to see the electronic configuration of molecules this is the most important topic from this section most of the questions are coming from the electronic configuration so electronic configuration similar to atom the electronic configuration of molecule means the arrangement of electron inside the orbitals in the molecule so similar to atomic orbitals molecular orbitals have the same set of rules for their electronic configuration that is a bahu principle pauli's principle and hund's rule so first of all according to a bahu principle we are going to see that molecular orbitals are going to be filled according to increasing order of their energy according to increasing order of their energy and here we have two order that you have to remember right now that is sigma 1s orbital 1s subshell sigma 1s anti bonding sigma 2s sigma 2s anti bonding and a little gap here pi 2px pi 2py anti bondings in bracket means they are have going to have equal energy because they are having 2p 2p subshell they are forming pi bond same type of bond same type of orbital so they are going to have same energy and sigma 2pz anti bonding another order will be sigma 1s sigma 1s anti bonding sigma 2s sigma 2s anti bonding pi 2px pi 2py anti bonding again having the same energy and sigma 2pz anti bonding so we are going to have two order for energy and this is the common part in both order one order will be applied if the molecule is having 14 electron or less another order will be applied if the molecule is having 16 electron or more for the 16 to 20 electrons we are going to have this order for 0 or 1 to 14 electron we are going to have this order for 15 electron you are going to see that 15 electron molecule is derived from 14 electron or 16 electron so, and the, on the basis of that the order will be applied now see in atom we are having this order of energy 1s 2s and then 2p 2p have three orbital of equal energy 2px 2py 2pz each combination will give you two orbitals one is bonding another is anti bonding so 1s bonding anti bonding after that 2s bonding anti bonding after that px py pz 
these two will give you pi bonding anti bonding this will give you sigma and bonding anti bonding so if you are having order of 14 electron or less you are going to have pi energy pi bonding before then sigma bonding pi bonding before then sigma bonding and if you are having 16 electron or more you are going to have sigma bonding before pi bonding so only this section is different in both of these energy order. This is the increasing order of energy and the orbitals will be filled according to this order. Orbitals will be filled according to this order. Second thing that you will, you will follow is Hunt's rule that is orbitals having equal energy first have single electron and after each having single electron then the pairing will be started. So you will follow Hunt's rule as well as Pauli's principle. According to Pauli's principle, you should know that any orbital can have a maximum of two electrons in opposite spin. Same is true for atomic orbitals, so same is true for molecular orbital as well. Now see, suppose I am having a molecule C2. C2 is having 14 electrons. Uh, C2 is having 12 electron. Why? Because each carbon has 6 electron and there is no charge. So for 12 electron, I am going to use the 14 electron or less order that is sigma 1s, sigma 1s anti bonding, sigma 2s, sigma 2s anti bonding, pi to px, pi to py, they are having equal energy, then sigma 2pz then we are going to have pi to px pi to py again these two anti bondings will have equal energy and after that we are going to have sigma to pz anti bonding this is the energy order first of all write the energy order now start filling the electron 12 electron so first two electron here two here two here two here two to four to six to eight right now in this two orbital which are having equal energy, first of all we will fill 1-1 one, one electron each orbital. So 13, um, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10. After filling 1-1 one, one electron in both orbitals, now we can pair them. So now we can pair them 9, 10, 11, 12. And with this we are having 12 electrons completely filled inside these molecular orbitals. Inside these molecular orbital so that's how we are going to do the electronic configuration of any molecule let's see the electronic configuration of some of the more molecules suppose we are having suppose we are having oxygen molecule 8 and 8 16 electron so for oxygen, we are going to have an order of 16 electron, right? Sigma, 1s, sigma, 1s, antibonding, sigma, 2s, sigma, 2s, antibonding. For 16 electron, you will have sigma, 2pz before then pi orbitals. Pi, 2px, pi, 2py. Right now you cannot derive this order, so you should learn this energy order. This is the only thing that you should learn from this theory. Say so pi to px, pi to py, then you will have pi to px anti-bonding, pi to py anti-bonding, both having same energy order. And then you will have sigma to pz anti-bonding for oxygen. Now 16 electron will be filled, 2 electron, 2 more. 4, 4 to 6 to 8 to 10, 11, 12, 1, 1 electron first, 2 to 4 to 6 to 8 to 10, 11, 12, then you are going to have 13, 14, then you are going to have 15, 16. So using energy order, you can do the configuration of any diatomic molecule having 20 or less electron. Any diatomic molecule having 20 or less electron. From this configuration, you can derive some of the result. First of all, as oxygen is having unpaired electron, 
ऑक्सीजन इज हैविंग अनपेयर्ड इलेक्ट्रॉन तो इट विल बी पैरा मैग्नेटिक इट विल बी पैरा मैग्नेटिक हाउ मेनी अनपेयर्ड इलेक्ट्रॉन आर प्रेजेंट इन ऑक्सीजन टू अनपेयर्ड इलेक्ट्रॉन ऑक्सीजन इज हैविंग टू अनपेयर्ड इलेक्ट्रॉन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू कैन फाइंड द मैग्नेटिक बिहेवियर ऑफ अ मॉलिक्यूल सेकेंड यू कैन फाइंड बॉन्ड ऑर्डर बॉन्ड ऑर्डर मीन्स नंबर ऑफ बॉन्ड बिटवीन एटम देर इज वन डायरेक्ट मैथड टू फाइंड बॉन्ड ऑर्डर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू फाइंड द डिटेल्ड बॉन्ड ऑर्डर वैल्यू द डिटेल्ड बॉन्ड ऑर्डर इज फॉर्म बाय वी हैव टू टाइप ऑफ बॉन्ड सिग्मा बॉन्ड एंड पाई बॉन्ड राइट सिग्मा बॉन्ड एंड पाई बॉन्ड अब सिंगल बॉन्ड इन्वॉल्व टू इलेक्ट्रॉन दैट इज आई कैन से टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स रिजल्ट इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ वन इलेक्ट्रॉन्ड two electrons results in the formation of one bond so one electron will contribute half will contribute half in the formation of bond one electron will contribute half in the formation of bond because two electrons will form a complete bond so every electron in the bonding orbital will contribute in forming half the bond every electron in the anti bonding orbital will contribute in breaking the half of the bond so bonding electrons that is nb will contribute in the formation of bond that is i have added plus sign anti bonding electron will have oppose in the formation of bond they will try to break the bond that will i have that is i have i have given here minus sign and we will divide it by 2 because of the contribution of each electron is 1 by 2 so we will apply this formula nb minus na by 2 for sigma and pi orbitals separately see here sigma electrons two bonding two four to six we are having six sigma electron in the bonding orbital so these six electron will contribute in the formation of bond the we are having two and two four electrons in the anti bonding orbital and these four these four will contribute in breaking of the bond that's why minus sign and we will divide both by two because the contribution is half that is one sigma bond we will get one sigma bond we will get similar concept can be applied for pi bond pi bond if you see here 2 and 2 we are having a total of four bonding electron and two anti bonding electron so for pi bond we will also get one pi bond that is oxygen atom is having one sigma one pi bond a total of two bond a total of two bond so we can say for oxygen the bond order is 2 this configuration this analysis will be helpful when you are going to find the type of bond whether the bond is sigma bond or pi bond because here there is no restriction that the single bond should be single bond should be sigma bond there is no restriction like this that is single bond can be pi bond single bond can be sigma bond it could be any case it could be any case another trick to find the bond order is if you are having 14 electron you will have a bond order of 3 you will have a bond order of 3 and now if you are going ahead or be behind that is for each electron increase or decrease you are going to have a change of 0.5 in the bond order that is for 15 electron then 16 electron 17 electron 18 electron 19 electron 20 electron 14 13 12 11 10 9 8 so for 15 and 13 you will have a decrease in bond order of 0.5 that is for 15 electron the bond order will be 2.5 for 13 electron the bond order will also be 2.5 for 16 electron the bond order will be 2 for 12 electron the bond order will be 2 this is your trick to find the direct bond order for 17 electron the bond order will be 1.5 for 11 electron the bond order will also be 1.5 so for 14 the bond order is maximum at 3 after that it will decrease in both direction 0.5 per electron 0.5 that is 1 by 2 per electron for 18 we will have bond order 1 for 10 we will have bond order 1 for 9 we will have 0.5 for 19 we will have 0.5 for 20 we will move to 0 for 8 we will move to 0 that is 
दिस मॉलिक्यूल डजेंट एग्जिस्ट दिस मॉलिक्यूल डजेंट एग्जिस्ट बिकॉज देर इज नो फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द बॉन्ड सो एनी मॉलिक्यूल हैविंग अ टोटल ऑफ एट बॉन्ड एट इलेक्ट्रॉन विल नॉट एग्जिस्ट तो सो यू कैन फाइंड द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल फ्रॉम द एमोटी थ्योरी एज वेल If the molecular orbital theory gives you bond order as zero, that means molecule is not having enough attraction to be formed. Molecule is going to be non-existent in nature. If you are having less than eight electron, then there is no trick. You have to do the configuration and then find the bond order. For less than eight electron, you have to do the configuration and then find the bond order. And for twenty also, the molecule doesn't exist. Again, the bond order is zero. So all those molecules which are having zero bond order will be non-existent. Will be non-existent. From bond order, you can compare two of the characteristic about the molecule. That is bond length and bond strength or stability. As bond order means the number of bonds between the atom. so as the number of bonds between the atom will increase that means your bond length your atoms will come closer and your bond length will decrease so bond length is inversely proportional to bond order and bond strength is directly proportional to bond order this is having a very common very simple meaning bond order means number of bond between the atoms if atoms are having more attraction they will be more stable they will be more strongly joined together so if bond order increases bond strength is going to increase and if they are coming closer the distance the separation between them is going to decrease that means bond length is going to decrease so sometime in question they will give you mo many molecule and will ask you to compare their bond length or their bond strength so these are the things that you can give directly from the molecular orbital theory that is unpaired or paired electron will tell you paramagnetic diamagnetic from bond order you can find the bond order and from bond order you can compare their length as well as their stability so these are the main section that has been asked in your previous year concepts now see this c2 molecule this is important molecule for c2 molecule you can see we are having 12 electron so the bond order will be 2 bond order will be 2 you can directly tell the bond order from your trick that bond order will be 2 for 12 electron that is okay but if you want to know the detail information about the bond you have to calculate the bond order how will you calculate first of all you will see sigma and pi separately now we will see here for sigma bond 2 four four bonding electrons are there so plus four four bonding electrons are there so plus four and then two and two four anti bonding electrons are there so minus four divided by two that will give you zero that will give you zero that is c2 is not having any sigma bond this is also possible according to molecular orbital theory it is not necessary anymore to have the first bond as the sigma bond that you have been read and understand in the previous theory in molecular orbital theory molecule can come along a z axis only and their first bond can be sigma or pi bond as well so here there is no restriction that double bond will always have a sigma bond and a pi bond that you can will see in the c2 molecule now see for the pi bond let's find for the pi bond two and two four electrons are in the bonding orbital four electrons are in the bonding orbital there is no pi electrons in pi anti bonding just be certain that for sigma electron you are going to look for sigma orbitals only for pi electrons you are going to look for pi orbitals only so here you will get the pi or electron as two so c2 is one of the two molecules which is only having pi electrons which is only having pi bond so c2 no doubt c2 is having a double bond that you can find directly but this pi and sigma bond information you could have to find from the electronic configuration from the electronic configuration or you can directly 
रिमेंबर दिस फैक्ट दैट ओनली बी टू एंड सी टू हैव ओनली बी टू एंड सी टू हैव नो सिग्मा बॉन्ड रेस्ट ऑफ ऑल हैव द नॉर्मल मीनिंग सिंगल बॉन्ड मीन्स वन सिग्मा बॉन्ड डबल बॉन्ड मीन्स वन सिग्मा वन पाई बॉन्ड ट्रिपल बॉन्ड मीन्स वन सिग्मा टू पाई बॉन्ड only for b2 and c2 this normal meaning is changed for b2 you will find the bond order try to do for b2 by yourself for b2 you will find the bond order as 1 and that will give you only one pi bond so these are two molecules which are having only pi bond no sigma bond and that can be easily understand you no need to remember this you can all the time find it from the electronic configuration so that can be easily uh, understand or explained through molecular orbital theory so this is all about molecular orbital theory students that you should know you should understand and able to solve the question upon these things let's see, see some question the question is saying consider the following species cn plus cn minus no and cn which one of these will have the highest bond order for such question you no need to do the complete configuration just see we are having cn positive we are having cn negative no and cn carbon has 6 nitrogen has 7 7 plus 6 13 plus 12 electron it is having 12 electron 7 plus 6 13 plus 1 14 electron minus means one electron extra NO eight plus seven fifteen electron, CN seven plus six thirteen electron. So we know at fourteen the bond order will be three. Fifteen bond order will become two point five. Twelve thirteen twelve so bond order will become two, and thirteen the bond order will become two point five. So out of these, which one is having the highest bond order? CN minus. If the question asks which one is most stable, C n minus. Which one is having most bond, highest bond length? Highest bond length will be of C n positive. For bond length, the bond order should be minimum. The bond order should be minimum. Yes. So for C n minus, the bond length will be highest. C n positive will have the longest bond length. C n minus will have the highest stability among the given four so using bond order you can compare their stability as well as their bond length let's see this question which of the one of the following pair of species have the same bond order again a question of bond order i hope everyone can do this question and post the answer in the comment box i hope everyone can do the question and post the answer in the comment box so this is your homework Which one of the following is paramagnetic? So for paramagnetic, you have to find the paired unpaired electron, and for that you have to do the configuration. But not every time configuration will be required. C n minus seven plus six thirteen plus one fourteen electron. Eight plus six fourteen electron. Eight plus seven fourteen fifteen minus one fourteen electron. Sixteen minus one seventeen electron. whenever the question is about paramagnetic or diamagnetic first of all find try to find which one is having how many electrons if any molecule is having odd electron odd number of electron can never be paired it is not possible to pair all the electron in odd molecule so any molecule having odd electron will definitely be paramagnetic don't consider the reverse statement to be true that is even molecule will never will not always be diamagnetic even electron can be diamagnetic as well as paramagnetic as you have seen in this example oxygen is having even electron but oxygen is also although paramagnetic so even number of electron can be paramagnetic as well as diamagnetic but odd number of electron will always be paramagnetic odd number of electron will always be paramagnetic the pair of species that has the same bond order in the following this question is also for you to do this is again a diy question let's call this question number 2 and the previous question as question number 
पोस्ट द आंसर ऑफ बोथ द क्वेश्चन इन द कॉमेंट बॉक्स पोस्ट द आंसर ऑफ बोथ द क्वेश्चन इन द कॉमेंट बॉक्स तो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट दिस मॉलिकुलर और बाइटल थ्योरी वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सिमिलर हॉट टॉपिक्स फॉर योर कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम वेरी सुन सो टिल देन कीप स्टडिंग कीप लॉकिंग ऑल द वेरी बेस्ट